is Michael Beckman, and I wanted to try to um, show everybody how to create the screen print layers for an image that's going to be printed on the with the MNR digital squeegee. Basically, what we need to do is we need to generally we're going to create a white highlight, just kind of like you would do for a screen print. Then we're going to create what we call a tie layer, which would be a second white that's designed to catch any of the digital spray. So generally this is a little bit more coverage than you'd want with a typical screen print because a typical screen print, some of the inks have some opacity. With the digital spray, there, there isn't much opacity, so you need to have something under it. And then the third layer we're gonna create is a clear overprint that goes on top to just to add some durability and some longevity to the print, make sure everything's sealed down nice. All of these can be done with fairly fine mesh screens and um, you can play around with what works best for you. So let's get started. This is just a piece of uh, clip art from a service that I kind of liked. So we're gonna try to print this graphic on a black shirt. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to start creating my underprints. I'm not going to worry about changing this to a CMYK or anything else yet. I'm going to start with um, creating those three layers of ink. So I'm going to make a copy of this layer. I'm going to go down here to the gradient map. You can do reverse. Um, in this case, my default setting was reverse. So what I'm showing here is basically everything without that black background. You can do all kinds of things with this. What we're going to do is we're going to try to see if we can't come up with a few different layers for this. The first one I'm going to do is about like this. Let's see how that looks. I always work in channels, so I like to see how this looks in my channels. It looks pretty good, so I'm going to make a copy of that. Then I'm going to go back to my gradient map. And let's take a look at that copy. Um, I always like to work in spot colors too. So um, this is pretty heavy. It's covering a lot of the image. If you take a look at uh, the image itself, you can see that this layer is covering up quite a bit of it. It misses a little bit of the red, but it's, it's not too bad. And I'm going to go in and adjust it. I'm going to pull back, see if I can't get a little bit more information going on out here. See if I can't get this looking just a little bit better. Maybe something like that. Let's see how that looks when I go into my channels. And you can see that this has quite a bit less coverage. So I'm going to make a copy of that. So I have one here with more coverage, one here with less. I might go in and do this one more time. Again, as I was mentioning, we have three layers we're trying to create. A highlight white, what I call a catching layer or a tie coat that holds onto the digital spray and then a clear that kind of covers it. So the, the clear, I can, I can make this a little heavier. So let's see if I can't come up with something for that. I'll compare that to the one I made before and you can see it's, it's got heavier coverage. So I'll make a copy of that. I'll go in and call these by what we're going to use them for. So this is probably a good one to use for the highlight white. You can see it's got some detail. And what's good about this is obviously this image that I selected has a black background and I don't want to print that much black on my shirt. So I'm going to drop that to, sh to the shirt and I'll show you how we do that here in a minute. But this one might make a good white. So I'll make this a white. I usually just color it so I can see it as I'm working, and I'll just call this white or highlight, something like that. This one's got a bit heavier coverage. Um, I think it's gonna end up covering quite a bit of where we have the digital spray, so it's a good starting point anyway, so I'll do the same thing there. I'm gonna call this a tie coat. You can call it a catching layer, something like that. I'd kind of recommend you don't think of this as an underprint as much as, as a, a layer that's there to catch the spray. So whenever I work with a factory, I try to teach them to start referring to this as something different than an underprint. Just to 
personal preference. This one's going to be the clear because it had the heaviest coverage. And again, I'm just giving them random colors so that I can see what I have. So I have my white. And you can see it pretty much covers everywhere I've got color. Let's take a look at the tie coat. You can see it's covering even more of the image. And then the clear obviously covers the most. This is kind of why I like to use different colors in this. It helps me see what I'm doing. And what I'll do at this point is I need to get rid of that black background. And what's good here is I can use one of these to do that. I'll probably use this one. And I'll just get rid of that black background. So you can see um, it's maybe not quite as, um, you know, we've lost a little bit of detail in here. We've lost a little bit in here. So that's something I may want to keep an eye on as I continue to work. But if I go in and look at the white, you can see I have quite a bit there. So I'm actually in pretty good shape here. Um, I've done this previously and made some adjustments. So this is what I did previously. I added some white type for this. I don't know, just to add some interest maybe. And compared to what I did on my own versus what I'm doing here for you, it's pretty similar. You can see that I've taken the, the white and I've kind of adjusted the levels a little bit because I think it's too heavy. So since this is just a highlight, I really only need it in the very brightest areas. So I would probably do something like that. And you can see that's pretty close to what I came up with before. The tie coat I came up with on my own versus the one here. You can see I've actually done a little bit better job with the tie coat here. And that's something I probably could go in and correct with the gradient map. But what we have isn't bad at all. And then the clear is obviously quite heavy. Having a little bit of the extra clear isn't going to hurt anything. So let's compare it to what I came up with before. And you can see they're quite a bit different. Um, the one thing I've noticed with the digital squeegee is if I have areas that are almost entirely a solid white, I don't really need to put a clear over it. So I can improve my hand by knocking the white out of it. So I might do that here. Now let's compare what we have. And then you can see all I need to really do is adjust some levels. something like this just to get it a little heavier in the areas that have a lot of spray a lot of the digital information so i'd probably end up with something like that compare that to what i did on the own and it's pretty close the tie coat is probably a little more difficult again we want this to go under everywhere we have digital information spray and you can see i've, I've got that pretty well covered. Under all my bright colors, I have the tie coat. And that's kind of what we want. So let's compare it to what I did before. You can see I have a little bit more information in my tie coat here. And again, that just comes down to how I use the gradient map. I probably could use either one of these. What I might do is I might take this Back off my midtones a little bit. Maybe I'll keep some of the highlights. I'll just play around with it until I like the look of it and make sure that it's covering all of my digital spray. I actually like the new one better. It seems to be a little heavier in areas where I want it to be heavier, and it doesn't come out in areas where I probably don't need white showing. So I might I might adjust that a little bit. To something like that. Basically what we've done is we've used gradient map to create a white, a tie coat, and a clear. You know as you play with this you may want to do some wash tests, see what works best for you. My clear just covers the main areas of spray. So let me show you why this might cause an issue. Is If this is where my spray is going to go, but you can see the tie coat 
seems like it goes out beyond that just a little bit. In other words, there may be some white peeking out from under my spray, and I don't want that. And basically, the very easiest way is to do something like this. I make a couple of copies of this layer. I might go into that one and um, put a little Gaussian blur on it. So there we go. Usually about three pixels is good. I might do that even again a second time. Depends on the graphic. If you have some hard edges and you want to make sure your registration is good, you, you probably need to do more of it than you would do on an image like this. But I'm going to do a little bit of it and then just merge the visible. Now when I look at this, I should see some of that spray coming out beyond my white. It's coming out a little bit beyond my tie coat, which for this image I think is fine. Um, so basically that did exactly what we need to do. At this point or even sooner I might go ahead and convert this into CMYK. And I'll show you how I go do that. I always go to convert to profile. The profile I use is usually Grackle. It has a pretty nice wide gamut. I have some different renderings I can use. You can see how that absolute color metric really brightened it up. Watch what happens here on the railroad tracks. The problem with using the absolute for this one is I think it's going to brighten it up maybe a bit too much. I'll lose a little bit of my white point down in here. So I'm just going to use the relative color metric. Now I've converted into CMYK for my digital squeegee. You can see that my spray is coming out a little bit beyond my tie coat. I might want to take it back just a little bit. And I'll do that with levels. That way I lose a little bit of these dots that might peek out from under my spray. Now let's take a look at it. I think we're in pretty good shape here. So I'll call that done. I would send this portion of the image to my digital squeegee. And I would send these three screen layers to my screen department for the eye image or for making the screens. Um, if I use this same working file anytime I need to go back in and make changes, I'm assured that everything lines up. There won't be any kind of registration problems. And you can see that looks pretty good. I've built some of this information back. And that's how it'll look on a black shirt. And I'll go ahead and sign off here now. I encourage you to, to play with this. And I want to give some credit to um, some friends of mine at Cedar Stream in Atlanta for um, showing me how they work with a gradient map. Normally, I had, when I started with the digital squeegee, I worked with an inverse of the grayscale but I found this to be a quicker way. So I want to give them some credit for helping me come up with this. Thank you very much.